wanted to make a quick video on uh, another battery build. Um, I buy a lot of stuff from AliExpress and I bought one of these battery boxes from AliExpress. I think it was like 15 bucks. I'll put the link in just so you guys can see this exact one. But it comes just like this. It's, you know, it's delivered from China. So it takes, you know, a week. I, I think their average time now is like eight days. So it's not even that long to get stuff from China. Um, but it's it's just these these little uh, plastic cases that you can uh, build a 40 this is the 48 version i i other video on the 12 volt version but this is the 48 volt version um, it ends up being a 6 by 13 so it, it comes with everything you need um, it has a nice little sturdy case and it comes with the 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 little um, cell holders and the the nic uh, the nickel plating and and even the wires and this one actually comes with a BMS. I don't know how good it is. I've never been a huge fan of most of the BMSs out there, especially from China. That they're not. I I haven't had the best of luck. A lot of them just don't really keep it as balanced as you like. So I've I've opted to mostly use um, cell balancers, so I'll just use one of these, and and I use the the display so I can I check it. I'll, I'll check the individual cells and make sure that they're perfectly balanced. If they're not, I just plug it into this for however long it takes, you know, an hour here and there, and then I just check it every so often, and then I also try to make sure I only charge it to 4.1 ideally unless I know I'm going to immediately go out sometimes I'll charge it full to 4.2 but um, for the most part I'm I'm using the, the 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 display to check all the to check I I use this to to make sure that all the cells are balanced and I use this to put them into balance if for some reason they're not. So anyway, yeah, it's it's the a nice metal case. It's it actually screws together um, once you get the batteries in there, and it has um, the everything you need in it. And like, and I think it's I remember I'm pretty sure it was like 15 bucks, less than 20 for sure for for everything you needed. And then. I use a lot of used cells. You can use new cells or, or used used cells out of like medical equipment, stuff like that. Um, comes, I don't know, I mean, fairly well packaged. There wasn't any damage to the ones I bought. I've bought a few of them. I haven't had uh, too much trouble with, with anything like that. Um, So you've got the top and the bottom for the cells. You've got all the, the nickel strips. <clears throat> and then you have the screws for the, to actually secure it. Um, so that's it. I, I do tend to use thicker metal, nickel metal, because usually they come with like 0.1, maybe 0.15 when you, 
if you're lucky, but I use 0.2 nickel strips, and I also make sure it's pure nickel. A lot of times it's nickel plated or whatever. Sometimes they can go cheap on that, so I usually make my own. But you can, if depending upon how much amp drawing you're going to pull, you could certainly use the ones that come with it. <clears throat> and then, as far as building it goes, um, again, again, I use used cells, so I strip them out of out of packs. Um, you know, lately I've been using these ones out of the medical equipment. And I just take these. I mean, these are good 3,400 milliamp cells, the NCR 18650B. So these cells started life as 3,400 milliamp batteries. So even used in these medical equipment, I've had great luck with them having over three amp hours in each cell. They're not necessarily made to pull huge current, but I use bigger batteries, so I don't have to pull as much current. I can get a lot more runtime out of them but yeah you just you break these down you just you, you sand the or, or grind the tops a little bit so that there's no high spots so that you can you can re uh, spot weld new uh, new nickel onto them and then reheat shrink them I, I i rip them out of here getting them out of here isn't always easy because they're all glued together so i have to heat re reheat shrink a lot of them and you can get heat shrink a thousand of them from china for next to nothing so anyway i i got more time than money so i tend to play with all this stuff um that's kind of nice comes with the charging port and the battery um the, that so comes with pretty much everything you need except for like i said the balancer and and I, I tend to use the, the JST um, connectors. That way I know that they'll fit in the, the display um, so I can always see where they're at. And then depending upon which battery, like I said, I use the, the balancers. Um, so yeah, that... So when you're building the battery, the biggest thing is to make sure that all the cells are matched, of course. And the way you, the way I do that um, is I just test them with a voltmeter and make sure that the six, the six cells that I'm, that I'm using, that I'm putting together in each of these lines are perfectly matched or as close to perfectly matched as possible because that's that's where you can get in trouble if the individual uh, sets of six aren't matched that's fine because my balancer is going to fix that it's the sets of six that have to be matched and so you know really all all you need to do is uh, get your voltmeter and just make sure that they're all matched and since these came out of packs, they were all together already. So they're pretty, pretty much matched already. And so you just take six that are all the same. And so as long as you know that they're all the same, you can line them up. Because each line is going to be connected together and you want to make sure that those all stay uh, balanced. Uh, you really need to be very careful about having all six in each line as closely matched as possible. Otherwise you end up running into uh, problems where one will drain into another so quickly that it could damage the cells. So you just want to make sure that the sixes sets of six are all balanced um i you can use the balancer or just charge individual rows um to to get them to get the rest of them in balance so like in this case i used some some of those cells were really low others were 
you know, half charged. So what I'll, what I end up doing later is just charging it, charging the individual groups of six so that they're all f a little closer together. And then I put the balance charger on it, or the balancer on it. <coughs> Here you, you could see I was creating the, the plug for it, which I just use those Anderson plugs that I, I like pretty well. I also Dremel um, scuff up the nickel plating or the nickel strips so that the solder will stick to it well. And then the other end of the plug has to be connected to the positive and the negative. So I do that ahead of time because you don't want to solder the less you solder around the batteries, the better. Um, so yeah, once once you get the the connector all squared away, whatever connector you're using, and all the nickel strips are ready to go, then you can get to the spot welding part. And the spot welding is fairly straightforward. You you really just want to be very careful to take your time, um, especially on the positive side. I like to get four spot welds on each connection, you know, a two and two basically. <clears throat> Setting the spot welder up is always a little uh, challenging, so you want to do some testing on some bad cells or something to make sure that the spot welder power settings are just right. And then once you <clears throat> spot weld on, there I I had six that weren't perfectly matched, so I spent some time charging and making sure that those six were, the last set of six in this group were all perfectly matched. So then I put those in, and then I was able to do that last row on the one side, and then flip it over and do, I do all of it except for the positive and the negative. I do those last. Um, obviously it's, that's one of the more dangerous parts. You just want to be very careful not to touch anything as you go through and double check and make sure you're not trying to spot weld the same polarity or something. Um, just be extra careful. And I mean, it really doesn't take that long. A good spot welder is so crucial. I played around with some spot welders that really didn't do the job and I like to use the thicker nickel metal just so that it has an easier time of transmitting the the power so as you can see here the last ones I did were the positive and it's already pre pre plug you know with the plug and everything so it's all set to go and then the negative right there and that's it and then I I do the cap tom tape um, the battery tape just as an extra layer of protection just to make sure that um, especially as you're working on it, it's good because then you can't accidentally short something out but even after that in the box it doesn't hurt to have it extra extra layer of protection there so then I I just I get my voltmeter and I double check and make sure all the connections are good and that we've got um, the voltage on all of them and then here I check the individual ones just to double check where I had the low cells. And I think there were six sets that were lower than the other ones. So I put those on my charger to bring them up a little bit just to make it so that the, the cell balancer doesn't have to work as hard. Get them at least in the ballpark and then the cell balancer can do the rest. Um, and then I have had to solder on the BM or the the connector for the balancer and the display. And I've said before, I like using balancers, and so I solder on JST connections that I can plug into the balancer and into the display. That way, I can always look. Every once in a while, after I've used it, you know, a while, for a while, I can plug it into the display and just confirm that all the cells, the individual rows of cells are still 
um, matched. And if they're not, I plug it into the balancer for a little while and then I'm good to go. So once, once I've done, I do two sets of seven. So those were the first seven connections. That's the, the negative and positive one through six is in that first group. And then this is the second group and that's cells seven through 13. And so I have two seven pin JST connectors that I can then use to plug into the balancer and or the display. And it's fairly straightforward. I cut them to the right length and then solder them on and then I tape them with just regular electrical tape so that they're all um, secure. And right there, I just take the voltmeter and I check check the connector before I plug them into anything to make sure that they're, I didn't reverse one or something. And I, um, and so at this point, we know it's all good and I can plug it into the display and you can see those are the first six cells and then plugged in the second seven cells. All 13 cells were displaying good, so I can put it in the box. The thing about the box is it doesn't have a connection or a, a hole big enough for the balancing wires, so I have to cut a little groove in the box in order for that to, to fit. I did tape one last set of tape across all those wires just for convenience, keep it a little bit more secure. Put it in the box and then tighten it up like this, um, just did the six screws that come with it. And so now I've got the completed battery and then I'm using this active balancer or active equalizer and boom, you're done. And once it's been on the equalizer for a little while, all the cells are perfectly matched. I can plug it in whenever I need to, to confirm that. And I'm really good to go. So I've been really happy with this going, you know, doing it this way, using a, an equalizer.